Hello everyone, and welcome to our daily devotional time. Uh, this week on, in our daily devotionals, we're going, to, we're going to focus on the one another's. And uh, you understand uh, that in Scripture, that phrase, one another, is very common. In fact, you'll find it um, more than a hundred times in your New Testament, in your Bible. And so what we're going to do is each of the ministers will be talking about um, these relationship the issues that you and I face. And, uh, and specifically, we're going to talk about one another's at a time when we're not together. It's kind of an unusual way to think about how we can care for each other in the midst of being separated. So I begin today with a very interesting phrase that's found in Romans chapter 15, verse 7. Accept one another, then just as Christ has accepted you in order to bring praise to God. Now, as long as I've been a minister, and um, I have worked with several churches, so I've been with the Conroe Church a long time, in every church I've been a part of, there's the same phenomenon. There is brother weird and sister odd. And, and by the way, that changes all the time. Some people are fairly normal for a while, and then they get odd. And some people are weird for a while, and then they get normal. But the truth is, for all of us, it is challenging to accept each other. Because we're not the same. We never will be, exactly. And so, why is it such a big deal to accept one another? I mean, is it that big a deal? Does it really matter that much that I accept you and you accept me? Well, according to Paul, it's really important. One reason it's important is that it is the model that Jesus gave us. Just as Christ has accepted us, we accept each other. By the way, Jesus didn't accept us because of our performance, did he? He didn't accept us because we were normal. <laughs> he didn't accept me because I wasn't brother weird. The truth is, he accepted me because of his love for me. The other thing that Paul says in this passage in Romans 15 is that we, when we accept one another, we end up causing worship to occur. It's, the phrase is, in order to bring praise to God. So the interesting phenomena that takes place is that when I accept you and you accept me, God gets the glory, not us. One of the reasons we need to accept each other is because of some of the very same issues that Paul was addressing in Romans 14 and 15, where we find this scripture. And that is that we come together as a group of people, as believers, and we come from different backgrounds. We have different family settings. We come from different cultural settings, attitudes, opinions. And so those challenges are right there in front of us when we're trying to 
work together, serve together, be a part of a church, and to honor God in the way we do it. So, the principle is that you and I accept one another just as Christ has accepted us, and it will bring glory to God. A couple of things I would suggest. If I'm going to accept you, and you're going to accept me, then one of the things you're going to have to do, and I'm going to have to do, is I'm going to have to surrender my personal liberty or rights. Because, you know, the truth is, you do some things, you know it, you do some things that really irritate me. And, and they get under my skin. And, and they go against my way of thinking. And yet, accepting you means that I surrender my right to be offended by you, to be put off by you, because this is what Christ has done for me. And so we stop passing judgment on one another, as Paul talks about in Romans 15. We put our focus on the kingdom of God, not on our personalities. We seek to build each other up, not tear each other down. And the result is we start living in unity and in oneness. We learn how to be unselfish. And we learn how to be in step with Jesus. And what I want to encourage you to do is just catch the vision of where this could take us. Just imagine that you accept me. I mean, fully accept me, as weird as I am, as unusual as you are. Just catch the vision of what that could mean. It could mean that we're a family. That we really are the family of God. And that with all of our uniqueness, differences, odd behaviors, we have been brought together in this wonderful family. We are not clones, but we're family. And we're also not judges. We are encouragers. It's not my job to constantly judge you, critique you, criticize you. It's my job to encourage you, to build you up, to be a blessing in your life. And we're also, when we catch a vision of this, we're not selfish. We're servants. I serve you, and you serve me, and God gets the glory. There's a wonderful prayer in, uh, toward the end of Romans 15, and I thought that we could use that as our prayer to encourage us to accept one another. And to see that God is ready to help us in this task. So I want to pray that prayer and challenge you today. Accept one another just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. And here is the prayer. It comes in Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Christ's name, we pray together. Amen.